girlfriend of two years, cheated with my neighbor and now lives there about a month ago. I ended my relationship with my girlfriend of two years. She began going back to school a few months ago and has been carpooling with a man from her area to go to and from classes. He claims to be an expert at manipulating people and circumstances the first time I meet him, which I find to be true. Since the beginning, I had a negative opinion of him and had informed my girlfriend that I believed he had terrible intentions and that he had a thing for her. She claims that he is not her type and that they are just friends. I make the decision to refrain from being the controlling kind and to put my faith in her. Forward to our anniversary, and she calls out of work claiming her back is hurting, but ends up performing a side job with her neighbor instead of going to her office. She doesn't get home from her part-time work until practically the wee hours of the morning. She said her phone had died, despite the fact that the person she was with had my phone number. He placed me on a no-contact list. When I approach her about infidelity, she completely denies it. After a while, she stops doing anything to assist out around the home and is always hanging out with her pals instead. It's Halloween a couple of days after our anniversary, and she asks me to go out and purchase pumpkins and wine so that we may carve pumpkins together. She's dressed in a terrible Halloween costume, and while we're driving home, she receives a text informing her that she's been invited to dinner and that I'm not. So I offer her an option, and she expresses her desire to be dropped off at the neighbor's house. So I put her there only to pick her up later, since she is clothed in newspaper and it is pouring, and I have just returned from three grocery shops in search of pumpkins. We return to our home and have a disagreement. She gets paid the next week, and I ask her to go out and acquire dog food for me since I'm broke and couldn't get any. After a few days of deceiving me into believing she had money, I discover that she had spent all of it on her friends. When I discovered she had spent $300 of my money, I ejected her from the house. She's now six homes down the street. In order to get out of my neighborhood, I had to drive by his home. By the way, he lives with his parents. I've lately learned that he simply wants to be friends with me. I've only spoken to her on the phone once since we ended our relationship. She contacts me to inform me that someone has while she is at work. I informed her that they were probably under the impression that she was of dubious morals. Thus, they were probably okay with it. She put a stop to my progress. Story 2. Caught my husband of 22 years cheating. I realized that my spouse of 22 years had been having an affair the week before Thanksgiving. In the preceding several months, I had noticed a few inexplicable occurrences, so I examined his text. History, really simply to set my mind at ease, and it was all there. Our relationship is filled with expressions of affection, pet names, plans for get-togethers, and grievances about one another. Not only that, but it happened within the preceding 24 hours. It was only when I confronted him with the information I had learned about his relationship that he acknowledged to having an affair. He said that the relationship began in February 2020 and had been continuing on since then. That's a period of one year and nine months. I was really taken aback. I knew she was a colleague with whom he had a friendship, but I trusted him and never imagined he would go so far as to cross the line. Following the incident, he went to meet her and informed me that he had stopped the relationship because he only ever wanted to be with me. He said that the only reason he was with her was because she made him feel desired. He was behaving at home throughout the affair as if he wanted to. Reignite our relationship now that the kids are away at college, which isn't entirely accurate. We were going on dates with each other and creating more time for one another. However, in his messages, he said that we were living together like roommates. The fact that I've never done anything like that with housemates surprises me. To put it another way, he was dating both of us at the same time. I didn't really think the affair was finished, so I used Find My iPhone to hunt him down, and he continued to visit her for the next three weeks after that. He took her out to dinner and a performance both Friday and Saturday nights the weekend before Christmas, one of which was a double date with another employee, on the Friday and Saturday before Christmas. On Sunday morning, when he left the house on what he said, was an errand and headed straight for her house. I finally admitted that I knew everything. As a result, he ended his relationship with her once again, allegedly, due to the fact that they had a lot of things to discuss. The meeting lasted five hours in total, and now he's stating that he wants to work through this with me in order to repair our relationship. As soon as I bring up the fact that he was seeing her as recently as two weeks ago, he argues that those encounters were no big issue since they didn't have sex and that the relationship was really winding down on its own. He said that they were mostly discussing their personal relationship issues. 
The writings I had seen three weeks previously did not seem to indicate that anything was coming to an end. As a result, I'm now attempting to figure out what to do. He seems to be earnest in his desire to correct the situation, and he has promised to go to therapy. He tells me on a regular basis how much he loves me and that I am his whole universe, and I believe him when he says this. I haven't seen him with her yet, and he's been very cautious to keep his whereabouts under wraps for the last several days. I, on the other hand, feel entirely cut off from him. I can't bear to look him in the eyes, and I don't want him to touch me. I'm afraid I'll never be able to trust him in the same way again. The only thing that has prevented me from leaving or evicting him is my desire not to break his heart in the process. Yes, you did read it correctly. I'm completely stunned right now. Story 3 I had an affair with a co-worker and now she won't leave us alone. We've had a difficult road to travel, but we're making progress toward reconciliation. Because it was a co-worker, the first move was to resign from his position. This was the very bare least he needed to do in order to even contemplate talking to me. Even though I'd expressed concern about her being too close to me on various occasions, she had insisted that they were only friends. He was asked to alter his phone number, which he agreed to do. If she didn't leave us alone and stop contacting us, I threatened to report her to the police. For harassment, in Australia harassment is classified as a civil matter, and you can get a court order ordering them to leave you alone. All of my husband's text message history was deleted, so I have no idea what they had said to each other. When her husband went into work to drop off his laptop and other belongings, she hid out the front and waited to talk with him. When she asked him to leave him alone, he informed her it was over. Following that, we have a week of sobbing and working out to see if we can even rescue this situation. As soon as I return to work, she appears outside my kid's school on the Friday of the following week in an attempt to ambush my husband, since she knows he picks up our son. It is her request that he not notify me since she does not want me to contact the police as a result of this. She tells him that she loves him and that she will be waiting for him when he gets back. Specifically, she wants to know whether she may drop off the Christmas gift she purchased him to our home for him. He tells her, I wasn't there, but this is what he says, that even if things don't work out between me and him, he will not go to her, that he will tell me, and that she should leave us alone. She had promised herself that she would never contact him again. My spouse informs me right immediately and then goes into a panic episode for a few minutes. He said he felt as though he had been ambushed and that he had lost control. It had a significant impact on him and brought home just how terribly he had screwed up our lives. He was quite sorry, and he was certain that he had been forceful enough that she would not approach him in the future. The two of us continue on with our lives, starting with MC and moving towards reconciliation. We have our good days and bad days, and then we get to spend the Christmas holidays together as a family. It's difficult, and to be honest, I still think about the infidelity on a daily basis. It's the first thing that comes to mind when I wake up in the morning, and it strikes me when I'm at my most vulnerable. My spouse, on the other hand, is being responsible and is responding to any inquiries I may have. We're putting in the effort with MC and attempting to make it all come together. She messaged him on Facebook a couple of days ago, just to see how he was doing along. See, she was in a domineering relationship with someone else, and she was projecting her views onto my husband and myself. It provided her with the moral high ground from which she could seduce my husband, which she absolutely did. At no time am I implying that he is not an independent adult who made his own decisions, but she aggressively pursued him after meeting me and learning that we were married with children. So she sent him a note to ask how he was doing and to see if he needed anything. As a result of everything I'd heard about their relationship, I wasn't shocked when she reached out to my husband. However, he was dead. Serious about getting back together with my husband. He immediately phoned Police Link to find out what his options were, and the following day, we were down at the police station filing a complaint with the officers. We must first file an order with the court and then submit it to the court. We will then be given a court date, at which time the judge will determine whether or not it becomes a criminal issue if she attempts to contact him or us again. All of this has pushed it back to the forefront of my consciousness. For example, he knew her address since it was the location where they the story of how she bought him gifts but he instructed her to return them because I would find out. The fact that I actually care for him and that it kills me every day is a horrible sensation.